I'm rambling. That's cool. We're gonna keep rambling though. I was just like, this is just an experiment. It's just data. <laughs> um, and it doesn't impact my worth and value as a human being. Well, hello there. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. Today I'm going to be doing the challenge of how many pages can you read in an hour? But with a caveat, because I don't think that the ability to read 100 pages in an hour or 150 pages in an hour is necessarily all that impressive. Um, I mean, it is, but also like, how much did you get out of that novel? What kind of novel were you reading? Like, depending on the spacing of the words and the type of novel that you're reading, um, reading 150 pages could mean really great things. It could also mean really terrible things. Um, being able to read 100 pages of a work of classic literature in an hour probably means you're not paying any attention to the words and you're just skimming over things um, and you're not really absorbing the novel. But in a children's novel that where the concepts are maybe not as um, technical, there's not as much life-altering things happening per se, it's mostly just for fun. Reading 150 pages in an hour could seem absolutely reasonable and a lot of fun. So I decided to do, to challenge myself to read for three hours with three different types of books, kind of to see what the range is. So I will be reading uh, The Midnight Library for an hour, I will be reading an and the reason I'm picking that one is because it's an adult piece of literature. I will be reading some YA, <laughs> um, Vampire Academy, um, a book that I'm already really familiar with and a genre that I'm super familiar with. And then I'll also be reading Oliver Twist, which is a classic. And I'm picking a classic because I know that I read classics slower and I have to slow down to read them. Um, so without further ado, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm currently on page 34. So in an hour, let's see where we're at. So I got to page 114, so that was about, well, 118, so I was about 84 pages. That's not bad for an hour. Um, look, I'm so far into it. <laughs> Hello, we're awfully close to the camera, but this is the best place to film at the moment. Uh, so for the next read for an hour challenge, I'm going to be doing Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I have never read Oliver Twist and I have very, very little experience with Charles Dickens. So I'm expecting that this will take a lot of time to read. <laughs> um, I'm, if I were to guess, I'd probably say I would make it through maybe the first 20 pages in an hour. It, I think it's going to be slow because I'm going to be taking notes. I'm going to be annotating. It's going to take a hot second. Anyway, so let's get to it. Alright, I finished. I got farther than I thought. I started on page 27 and I made it to page 61. So it was about 34 pages. Um, and I was like, wow, I'm cruising through this. And then I remembered that these books like to use words and I don't know what they mean. So I had to pause and like write the definitions down and look them up. And so that took a lot of time, um, which is fine because I like learning new words. That's interesting to me. Um, anyway, so 34 pages in one hour, um, which if you're curious, it means it's going to take me 13 hours to get through this book. Um, not that it matters because I'm not here to try and finish it at a specific time rate or whatever. Um, I I enjoyed it. I didn't realize that like chapter two of Oliver Twist is where the famous I want Samoa comes in. Um, first of all, this is a sad book. Um, Oliver Twist is like having a real crap life and I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be more crap for the next 400 pages um, <laughs> anyway okay so there's that on to the next book all right next book 
The Last Sacrifice by Rochelle Mead. This is a book I am pretty familiar with. I've listened to it, well, I guess I've only read it once, but this is YA. It's a genre that I'm already super familiar with. This is a book I'm really familiar with. Um, I am expecting to be able to fly through this, partially because I know it, and then partially because, like, the words, there's a giant space between each sentence. Um, I'm like, Oliver Twist, or it's teeny tiny writing, and there's not much spacing. Um, which just goes to show the page count is, is not a great measurement. It's not, it's, it's not a bad measurement. It's just not an accurate measurement. So, here we go. Oh wait, I lied. First, I'm on page 63. So we'll see where we are in an hour. For reading for an hour. Um, so I got to page 154, so that means I read about 91 pages in an hour, um, which is about what I was expecting. I was, I guess I was hoping maybe a little bit that it would be 100 pages, but that's purely an arbitrary number just because I like the sound of 100 over 91. I think it's really interesting that for Charles Dickens, <laughs> I spent an hour reading and being in that world and I got 34 pages into that novel um, and versus the Vampire Academy where I spent an hour and I got 100 pages in um, and I think that says a lot about how easy it is to digest books that are written in our own time period and with our own social cues because I'm betting that I my reading time still would have been fairly slow for something like 1984 or for um, something written in the 1940s and the 1950s simply because the culture is different and there's a lot more processing that has to happen. Um, Charles Dickens uses a lot of words that I have maybe heard. Some of them I was like, I is this English? Do I know this word? I don't think I do. Um, and that's okay. <laughs> um, I think it's super interesting and entertaining to see how many pages you can read in an hour, but it doesn't it doesn't increase my value over somebody else <laughs> who reads slower. Um, it doesn't decrease my value. Um, it's it's just a it's something entertaining and interesting to do, but I don't think that it's a good marker of. <laughs> your value and that's a 360 degree change from how I used to be because I remember I've done this before I did this all the time when I was little and like like I like especially when reading Harry Potter I could blow through like 110 pages in an hour because I was familiar with the story um but also <laughs> I didn't really enjoy that reading because I was trying so hard to get through it as fast as I could. With this challenge, I made sure that one of the things I did was read just about every word because I have a tendency to skip words and move forward and skip paragraphs when I'm not interested, and that's not the best, closest reading that I want to be doing. So I read all of the words on the page, and I didn't let myself try and feel the pressure of needing to read more. I was just like, this is just an experiment. It's just data. <laughs> um, and it doesn't impact my worth and value as a human being. Um, and cool. <laughs> so what do we, what do we take away from this? Well, something interesting that I've noticed this year is that last summer I, during quarantine, read War and Peace. And I spent probably 150 hours reading War and Peace, because it took me an hour to get through 15 to 20 pages. Like, it was it was slow going, um, and that drove me a little bit crazy at the time. Um, but looking back on it, like, I have so many moments where something that I was doing before I read War and Peace or after I read War and Peace, like gardening, <laughs> I would often um, garden and then read War and Peace, or War and Peace and then garden, and so when I'm doing my own gardening now, I'm looking at it, I'm going, oh man, I remember this part in War and Peace, I remember this part in War and Peace, and because I spent so much time involved in the world, and I didn't, I couldn't go as fast as I would have liked, um, that world meant more to me, and it was more alive and more rich and more, more built up, and I think that might be part of the problem 
that I encounter with a lot of books and rereading, which I've talked about before, is that I often will reread things multiple times simply because I'm reading it too fast to absorb the story. So this was a really interesting experiment for me just to see, because out of these three books that I've just read, um, Oliver Twist is the one that stands out most in my mind simply because of the amount of work I had to put into understanding it. Um, I know Oliver Twist, <laughs> those 34 pages that I did get through, um, I I remember those that story the best simply because of the amount of work that I had to put into it. Um, and that might be just something about me that like the more effort is, that is required on my part, um, the more I tend to remember it. Um, that like that's how my brain works when it comes to studying in school. Um, and that may not be the case for everybody. And that's fine. I'm rambling. That's cool. We're going to keep rambling though. Um, but I think the biggest takeaway is to make sure that as I'm reading, it's okay to read it slowly. <laughs> it's okay to not finish a hundred books in a year. Um, I have worked really hard this year on trying to not do statistics as much as I have in the past. Um, I don't know how many books I've read this year, um, which is a huge cry from many other years when I have counted them fastidiously. Fastidiously? Is that even a word? We're going with it. Fastidiously. Um, and I've obsessed over the amount of books that I'm finishing each month. Like I've kept track of those statistics and the page numbers for each month. And this year, I'm just not worried about it. I mean, I'm not letting myself be worried about it. <laughs> um, I think I set my Goodreads goal to be 50 books. Um, but that's only because I usually hit somewhere in the 75, 100 range. So 50 was a very easy goal. I'm not worried about reaching it. Um, and the goal this year is to just have fun reading. And there are definitely moments when I stress myself out about it and I don't like, this is a hobby. <laughs> this is for fun. And I have to constantly remind myself of that simply because my nature is to go all black and white, to go a hundred million miles an hour and to not stop and enjoy just reading. Um, I really liked being able to sit down for an entire hour and do nothing but read. I often will just sit and read before bed um, without knowing how, like, I just read until I fall asleep. And so sometimes that means I read for an hour or two. Sometimes that means I read for 15 minutes. But being able to dedicate an entire hour and say, this is something that I'm going to do for this hour, like, that was fun. I definitely plan to do that more in the future. And it, yeah, that was, that was something that I definitely want to take away from this. Um, and it's okay to read it slowly because it, like the more time I'm involved in that world and reading the words on the page, the more that world will stick out to me. Um, and in the end, that's what I want is for the things to stick out for me to be able to remember them, um, to feel like I was truly and honestly there <laughs> instead of taking a quick, quick selfie of the book as I breeze through it and then needing to look back on that selfie and be like, oh yeah, like I kind of remember what was going on there. But not really. I don't know if that metaphor makes sense. Metaphor? Is that metaphor? I don't think that I don't think it's metaphor. Does that story? Is that example? That's the word I'm looking for. Does that example make sense? Um, that's the one you got. So I hope you're happy with it. Anyway, I will talk with you all in the comments down below and in another video. Bye.